All right, so from now on, I think I'm just going to record at very specific points where I figure something out or, or yeah, mainly figuring it out uh, because these videos are just getting way too long. Nobody's going to watch them and nobody, nobody actually cares. Nobody, even me, I'm not going to go back and watch any of these. So it doesn't really matter. And plus, I just want to listen to music more than the, what I've been doing. So uh, to start out the day, we are going to finish this. And then when I finish figuring out what to return here. Oh yeah, okay. I need to return a Yeah, I mean I guess I need to return the order where I turn every single part of this order into an array. And so I guess here if I try this and it's not an array, then I need to actually take that and take that part and turn it into an array. Yeah, I don't know. This is the part where I just pause and I'll, I'll figure it out. So it looks like you can you in order to store an array within an array, you need to have the data type be object. So I don't know of any other way right now to still run this in number, but since it's NumPy, it's still gonna be pretty fast. Um, granted, I think if we do this, this takes 0.3 seconds, and this same exact thing with NumPy, What? Wait a minute, what? This can't be real. You're telling me the same exact thing in NumPy. Why is this tit? No, no. 14 seconds? And this takes 0.3 seconds? Oh, that's for, uh, that's for the, that's for the actual looping through. Okay, so I guess what, what I was going to say is like, this part right here is going to take, you know, no time at all. So this doesn't need to be number for right now. But hopefully I can figure something out here. Um, because this Caspian product thing down here, you send it a tuple. And so... But this whole process, I mean, it, it literally takes z zero seconds to do. Even if all of these things were, um, all of these things were arrays, this would probably still take like 0.3 seconds. So it doesn't need to be number. And so now I just need to figure out how, if, Yeah, so now I need to figure out how if I end up with something like this, how do I then know to
I think what I would need to do is return order in B like this, and then send this back as lev mode equals np dot array then do uh, order dot lev mode like this right because now I have to take all of these and uh, so that way I can just always leave those things as like lev mode zero and then I don't even know if I need to send it back like that. Well, anyways, now that this part is done, I now need to figure out the next part, which is, what did I say? So you get the data, you get the entries, you get the order Cartesian, then you get the order with the in values. So now after this, we'd have to create the order. We would have to go to a separate function that creates. So here I would have to send it back as an array. So here, I think that I would have to do that. So here it's like, uh, like, it, is it possible to create an order with floats and then add the zero? after created i think i don't think that's possible i think it's always just gonna have to be zero but then how would you even do that how do you create an how do you create half of an order and then you create the other half and then also to here how do i know that this is uh I have to save, I don't know where this would go. Cause here, this is where it's like, this is where I would need to, I need to build the order one by one somehow. But you, but I don't, you can't do that. Yeah, I need to figure out how to build the order. But I might have to end up doing this Cartesian thing for every single thing, because I don't know, I don't understand how you would do a order this. And then here you'd have lev mode. And then you just have order dot lev mode. Then you'd come here and then you'd have size equals size zero or whatever size in. Then you'd come over here and then say like uh, order type equals order dot order type. You know, you can't you can't build a half of it. So I think you're going to always have to do, you know, left mode in. So I think everything is going to have to come out like this. 
as much as I don't want it to be like that. I think I just need to For the sake of, of, so instead of trying to be efficient, I just need to do it and make it work. And then afterwards, after it's done, I can make it more efficient because I just need to get this done so that way I can promote it on YouTube. And that's it. I just need to get this done so I can promote it on YouTube. So for the sake of efficiency, I'm just going to have this thing return the order with all of this. But now the problem is that I don't know, I guess here, yeah, I don't know after this. So you, so you create the tuple, you're basically creating the, 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 the list. Then here you create the tuple and here you create the size that it need, that it's going to need to be. Then, how, again, I guess I have the question of how do I know that this is, how do I know what this is? How do I know what this is? How do I know what this is? So, I think it would just be easier I think it would just be easier to send every single order as an array. So every single one of these things needs to be an array, right? And then if it's an array, uh, this is a tuple. So then we just send in the tuple here and then it does everything that it does and then it spits everything out. So yeah, I guess just sending it as a tuple, sending, Again, this is the way it's just going to have to be for now. So everything is going to have to be NP array this and then whatever. Everything is going to have to be like that. Just for the ease of use. But later on, I can maybe figure out how to do it to where if somebody sends in like one number, then we can do all of this because then this if i do it that way then that allows me to do this in number as well so um
I guess uh, inside of the order creation part, I would go in here and run a for loop and check if it check if it's an array. If it's not an array, then you make it an array. Right? So here. Yeah, so here I can just accept anything. And then down here, I run a for loop to see is this first thing lev mode order type so yeah i could just run through a for loop and see is this a uh an, an array if it is store lev mode equals lev mode if it's not then lev mode equals np dot array of lev mode and then go to the next one and then just run that for loop really quickly all the way to the very end and then after that you come into here and do this but then uh and that's it so here run a for loop checking if it's an array or not if it isn't turn it into an array and if it is then please it there you go that's the answer for right now and then we will remove all this sh stuff we'll remove this And then raise equals order. And that's just going to be a tuple. Yeah, again, for now, I can just change this to order, 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 but I just want to make sure that it works. And then it'll output. Oh, shit. Well, then here, after it does that, then I would have to... Because that's going to return this. So then how do I, I'd have to say that the first one is lev mode. I guess. I guess that's, that that's where this comes into play. So I'd have to have another. Well, I'd have to have a for loop going through the arrays. And then I'd have to say that this first thing is lev mode. This second thing is this. So I'd have to do a for loop creating variables for each one of these things and then at the very end return order everything of this. So I'd have to do a Yeah, because how would I even do that here?
Oh, that's easy. I just do this. Order. Order everything. Lev mode equals arrays. So if I wanted to get the first row, that's this. Yeah. So I would just do zero here. And then the next one would be uh oh wait, if I did zero, it's just an array. So let's say Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here it's just zero. Uh, I would take this. This. And then here, I'll just do one, two, three, four, eight, seven, eight, nine, eleven. There's got to be a way. Anyways, we're moving on. There's got to be a way to do this a, a lot better. Because if I change anything within this, I'm fucked. So there's got to be a way to go through and grab the name of this and set it as a variable and set that variable equal to this. So like I could, I got to be able to go through. Yeah, anyways. Again, we are just trying to get this done. Just to get proof of concept. Because even right now, I just remembered that I have to take price out of this. And now I'm fucked. Because <laughs> price is still here. So each and every single one of these things has to be an array. So I guess here is where I'm going to have to figure that out. I have to figure out how to take the tuple name and set it as a variable. Convert, program to convert tuple.
No, I don't want to do that. How do I have a... Uh... So let's say size equals zero. What? What? Tuple takes it. What? Oh. I have to do a named tuple. Wait a minute. Where's this order? Oh, I already have order. Okay. So how do I... How do I get the names of this? If I can get this, Fields. Ah, here you go. Zero. So how how do you create variable from a string? I was able to get this to work, even though this is super ugly. Let's see. Or X and a Hmm. This doesn't make any sense if it's a, a tuple of arrays. How does this not work? that made doesn't make any sense so i'm running into an issue here where if i send order the tuple of order has these things as just array but it doesn't have it as np dot array It just has it as array. So this thing does not like that.
But if I take this off, it has no problem. But if I put it back on, I would have to send it. Uh, this. This is a tuple of all of those things. It worked last time. It's definitely worked last time. You see? Try it again. I guess we don't need to put a people around it. I guess this is where the flexible broadcasting comes into play. Because now I'm thinking, all right, well, here. You come in and you set all of the variables. Then, after you set all the variables, you throw all of those things into a tuple like this. Then from there, you feed it into these array, you save that as arrays. Then you come in here and you run this whole thing. And then you spit out this as your order. I feel like that's uh it's the only option. That is the only option. is basically what I did here.
So then inside of here, we'd have to say this. Oh boy. Got to be away. There's got to be a way to delete everything after the equal sign. So we have found the regular expression, so equals, anything after the equals, and we'll replace that with a comma. Boom. We'll do this. We'll do this. Then we shall do this. And now let's see if this will actually work. Wait, why the fuck lev mode? What? Lev mode. Order. Order type price. Size. So now here, let's do this. Order type, price, size type. Oh. So this would be zero one two zero one two three four five. Let's do five zero. What? Oh. Let's do this. Let's say order close. Let's say order. Boom, then we say order five. Then we say zero. This just says nan, it doesn't say np.nan. Oh no. Is 
Is that still gonna work though? Because that has been working in the past. All right, so let's say that, wait, let's see. God damn it. How, man, how? Or X in arrays. How is this possible? This is a fucking tuple. This is a tuple. India Ray, India Ray, India Ray. This is the most frustrating shit in the entire universe. How is this possible? You can send all of this shit. How is this possible? How can I do this? List or tuple of arrays. How can I send this? And get this output. But then when I... Everything is a fucking array, man. Why? How is it possible that when I send it... How is it possible that when I send this...
quadruple of a raise. How? How? This is a tuple of arrays. But yet I add all this stuff back in and it doesn't work. That works. But this has none of that. This is the same exact things. How is that possible? This is the same exact thing. Actually, wait a minute. What does this even look like over here? Oh my god, this entire time I've been on the wrong screen. Oh my god! If I take this and I turn it into a tuple, this is what it actually turns out to be, which is basically the same. Oh, maybe. It's because when I do order, I have that like size equals, this equals, that equals, all that shit. Okay, okay, okay. Tuple order. Wait a minute. Wait. So order still has false somewhere? Where does order have false? Order. Log. That doesn't make any sense. Order everything. Log is a float here. Here, in order in B, which is what we're calling. Log is still this. Log is log.
log is, is this. How do you get false? How are you still getting false? How are you still getting false? What? How do you still get false? Why is this one, but log is still false? What? How is log false? What the fuck? Oh. Maybe it's because of cash. It still says false! How is this happening? Where? Log is MP array zero. What raise rejection? If is raise rejection and order dot raise rejection is rejection. Order dot raise rejection. All that shit out. Now let's try this. <laughs> what? It's a tuple. How? What? Oh. Wait, what? Oh, 
Finally it works. Finally it works. Okay. So now We copy this over to here. I guess this could be a helper function. Okay. This gets the order in array form. Wait, what? Hey, we don't even have to put tuple around it. It just automatically does it. Nice. Okay. So here, we could uh, change all of this to say raise. Oops. You piece of shit. Arrays. So we do this, we do this, we do this. We do this, we do this, we do arrays, change it to order. There we go. I don't, I think it would be better to just out equals out dot t. And then here, we say out dot t. Out. There we go. All right. So now um Now, now, now. We have our order. And now, in our next part, we would have to take the order. Where was my... Uh... So we don't need this. We don't need this, we don't need this. Where's my thing up here? Here it is. So now that we have the order, then we're going to have to say for the length of one of the things in order, length, 
order zero. Current order RAM. So here we would do current order of the param in range length of order. Then after that, we would do the entry, uh, the, the setting that we said. So this would be like uh, RSI below 20 and window 14. Then here would be the current bar. And then if there's an entry at this point, then do this thing. And then we go through that. And then we come back up here. We go through that, 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 that until we're done with that. Then we come back up to here. We change the parameter to whatever it is that we're going to do. Then we do it all over again. And then eventually we spit out something. But the problem here is that I feel like the order records are going to be enormous. I don't even think that you could create a an order record this big. But apparently you can because that stop analysis thing that we did had over 4 million backtests, 4 million, 4 million possibilities, 4 million results. So can you create an order records that is size 4 million? I think what I could do is if we run this, then that means that we would MP dot empty. Thing equals loop faster. Delete print thing. And then we do this thing. What? We do like six by thing. No, it's thing by six. Well, I guess that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess it's a million times easier than I thought. What the hell? No way. That's real? Got 15 gigs. Okay, well, I guess you can do that. So I'm I'm thinking that what I can do is multiply this number by this number by this number. But the problem is that you're only going to get oh uh, well that's going to give me the log size. So I could create a log 
if I'm going to create a log, I can create a log with this size, with this times this times this size. Um, and then if I want to create an order records, then uh, it would have to be this. Um, and then also it would have to be the uh, take profits. Oh, man. Well, I might as well just create two with the size of I don't know. Anyways, so where are we at? We are at a point where uh, we just have to do this. Because we already have the process order MB. We already have the execute. We already have all that stuff. So all we have to do is just get the order ready here. And then we get this column. And then we get this entry. And then we just do what we did over here with the RSI. Uh, here so this is where we get our order and then we just uh we pro we process the order if there's an entry So yeah, we we create the order. Uh, yeah, we create the order here. Order equals order. Then we come down here, column for this, column for this, and boom. And if this shape right here is, I don't know. So we are pretty close. We are pretty, pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. All right, so now that I'm putting this together, I'm realizing that if I'm gonna run this simulator, we'll come down here, we'll get the total order settings. Then, uh, uh, wait, what? Oh, this is going to be done outside of. Is that the way this works? What? So I guess that I would be creating the order out here. Then I would send the, oh yeah. And then I would send the entries and all this other stuff. Okay. So then, uh, uh, hmm. Yeah, okay, never mind. I was going to say, if I was creating the order inside, then I know exactly what I would be uh, wanting to test more of. But uh, clearly, that's not the case. Um, so, I'll, okay, so in here... We'd have to do order... Equals. Uh, yeah. I guess we'd have to do something like this. Order equals this. Order equals. And then all of these things that say out. Oh, shit. Uh, all these things that say out. Uh. 
we have to change that to order. And then and then we'd have to change this to I. So, yet, I wish I could go off this selection here. So here, throw it back over into here. And do this, and do this. Order, and that's not gonna work. Do this, then we have to change that to this I. It's well, no, it's not going to be I, it's going to be a uh, Let's we'll call it OS for order settings. OS. I think this is good. This is right. It better be right. Because here we are getting the first. First row, second row, third row, fourth row, then we're getting the number. Okay. So this makes sense so far. So for OS in range this, we do this. We get the all we get our order ready. Then So getting the Cartesian product of this from up here. And then this, we're gonna change this to, whoops. We're gonna change this to stop loss percent. And we will do a 25%, point seven five one. Five, I guess. And what else is there? I don't even know what my own thing is. Okay, so we have stop loss, size percent. We don't need that. Risk to reward, we have that. Slippage, status. TP percents. So I guess it's kind of it. Um, Oh shit, no. Let's do this up here. So order equals order Cartesian product for order. Then we'll get this, then we'll get this. Record count is this. Order records, log records. Shit. Now I have to create a, an account out here. Account state equals account. Wait, what? How do I create an account state? <laughs> How the hell do I create an account state? Account state. Oh, really? I just do this? Okay. 
Well, I mean... Okay. And then for my entries. Uh, Windows is going to be list range from 15 to 40 in steps of 5, 41. I just put that here. And then this would be list of range twenty to let's say sixteen through thirty one in steps of two. What does that even create? Yeah, that's what I want. That is what I want. There's no way it's that fast. How is it that fast? 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. Oh no, it's supposed to be the close. How can the close and the open be the same thing? Yeah, 56 columns, 6,960 6, rows. These are my columns. What does this even mean? Ew. I mean, all the rows of column zero. What? Give me all the rows of column zero. What? This is column zero. Give me all the rows, right? I guess I had to do this I lock thing. Go. Oh, the reason why I had it over here. Okay. That's the values. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okej, okej, okej. So now I got the order. We've got the total order settings equals this. We have total indicator settings. We have this. What is this? If entries. In this, then order settings OS for order settings. Oh, whoops. Then we have total indicator settings. This is I uh, nope. This is indicator settings, indicator settings. Uh, so it would be this indicator settings, right? Actually, we could call this temp current equals entries, and we'd say settings all right so give me the column this with all the rows and then here we'll do if this so that way we don't have to call the whole a numpy array we'll just grab a little section of it do the bar and now we'll process this shit the column, I guess group for now could be this. Oh shit. This has to be OS. OS, this would be indicator settings. And this will be bar. And then you have your account state and you have your order. I think up here too, you'd have to have another account state. Yeah, you have to have another account state as well. Uh, you'd have to have this. But you have to have all of the... You have to have all of these things. And I don't know what all of them are, so let's uh, go find out what they are, shall we? Oh, man.
Oh, I forgot how to do the regular expression. Uh, reg. So I guess it's here. It's this, anything after that. So we will. Whoops. We'll put an equals. Whoops. We'll do that. There we go. Now we'll make it back over here. So I guess technically this should work. Cartesian tester. All right, so. Let's try. What the fuck? Makes sense. What? What? Wait, what? Look at this. What the fuck is this? Okay. So I think I was running into a problem here because I would do order equals this, and then I would say lev mode equals order of this. And then once this gets placed, then I, I lose all of my Cartesian orders. So I have to change this to cart order equals Cartesian order of the order. Then from there, we'll come down and we'll create order. And then inside of that, we're gonna take the leverage mode of the Cartesian order zero at this. That's what the problem was. Maybe. Well, one of the problems. So now let's try to run it again. I have another error. Order Q. Shit. Now I gotta delete all this stuff here. All right. Uh, I guess it's working. There's 11,000. Wait, why is this 55 and then this is zero and this is 55 and this is zero? Why is the column zero? Why is this IDX? Oh, that's bar. Why is this column zero? Why is this? Oh. It needs to be this and it needs to be this. So let's clear it. Run it all again. Size is one Bitcoin. 
Oh, I need to, uh... Uh... Oh, wait, what? I don't have this. Huh? What is this? Buy functions, testing, dispatch, tutorials, this, 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 this. What the hell am I doing right now? Hello, brain. Hello, hello, hello. Oh. Huh? I did this. Why is it doing this? Brain, hello. What? What? Why is this not working? Why is this not working? What? Put dot set. Try in numpy dot array to string which takes a num as an input. You can set position. What? The press. Line with. Uh hmm. hmm how do you why you no work? Why you no whack? Well, it seems that this is working, but then it, I don't know.
I don't know what the hell any of this is. Wait, price is three. Oh, the price is three. Oh no! I actually need to create the order each and every time. Inside of here, which I don't, I'm not gonna do it. Process order. It's going to take. Oh, shit. Process order is going to take price, and then I have to send that price to here, then I have to send that price to here, then I have to change all that shit. Uh, well, for now, I guess we shall have to move this to here. And the price. What the hell? And why can't I? Can't scroll down anymore. I'll hold the control. Alright, this. And price is going to have to be open. Bar. Size must be greater than one. Well, errors. So I had a situation where my account balance got down to less than a dollar. So I think what I need to do inside of this is say, inside of here, if account balance if account state dot account balance is less than one then break. Is that gonna solve anything? Account balance. Available balance. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I only did 1,000, I only did 16 columns.
if a account state dot available balance is less than How is that possible? I had $42 there. At $38. Why did it stop? $37. Got to $5,058,000. Why do I have $33? Is it because I also need to reset a create a new account? Oh, I need to create a new account here as well. So when I come back up to here, I need to create a new account. And then when I come back up here, I'm going to go here, then I'm going to go here. All right, I think this should actually. Oh, no. Wait, why is it? What? Why do I start out with $7? Why am I still starting out with the same? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna call this OG order. This is going to be OG account state. And so here, I have to do this. Okay. And then I think this is fine. OG account state comes in here. We get our first set of orders. We get our indicator settings. Then we get our account state. It's based off of our original account idea. Then we come into here and we actually start going through the current indicator. But I still don't fully understand why we went from column zero to column two. Well, one, then we went to two, then we went to three, four, then where the hell is five? Anyways, I have to restart all this. Let's 
run this. Oh, gee. What? Three sixty eight. What if is raised and order dot raise rejection equals zero? Raise rejection. What if raise rejection if is raised is rejected? Huh? I'll come back to you when all this stuff is done. I think there was an issue here because I had if it is rejected and order dot raise rejected equals equals zero. That means if it equals false. So I should have said is rejected and order dot raise rejected equals equals one, which is true. I think. Because by default, raise rejected is zero. But that means that at a point, at one point, there is something that is rejected. Why would an Uh, if new account balance is less than zero, rejected. Oh, oh, oh. So it, we can allow it to be rejected, uh, but we just won't raise it. We just won't raise anything. Yeah, so here we have if new available balance is less than zero, order not filled, order status rejected, new free new free cash zero or lower, whatever it is, new, whatever. And then order equals order. Uh, and here we're just not so it gets rejected, but we're not going to raise this, which causes the value error. Uh, okay. Hmm. Huh? Fifty-five. Why is it only why is it only giving me fifty-five? <sighs> okay. That's because I gotta set account state dot log uh, log count id order count id shit how do i do this Oh, wait a minute. So we have this OG account state. Then inside of here, we create an account state.
this would be zero. Shit, how do we do this? Because I don't all I don't want it to always go back to zero. I want it to be the 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 new account state that we have. And then we'll come back up here and then we'll do account state this. Shit. I think we're going to have to do uh Oh shit, how do we do that? I'm going to have to send the order I'm going to have to send the order count and the log records count. And I guess this is also why it he probably did it as a 2D array. Because then you can reset, you can reset the account, you can reset the order count. So this could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to order 62. Then you reset it again, and you come into a new column of the order records. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 that doesn't make any sense. Because I should be able to just start over 0 through 62. Then you, then you start over again with 0. Wait a minute. It, yeah, it could start at 0 again. And then you just change the column. You just change the column number. Oh no. But the column number is indicator setting. So then when you come all the way back up to here and you go to OS, then this changes back to zero. And then you start at zero, zero again. And then you get everything all messed up. Oh no. But that still doesn't make any sense as to why the order records. Oh, that's because this. Zero through 55. Or zero through whatever. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's see what happens if I just Why is it still 55? Yeah.
Uh, getting too tired for this. Is it still 55? Got all these order records filled. Now what happens? Why is none of this shit getting filled in? Wait, what? It's getting filled in here? What? Why is this happening? Oh man, the order record count has to just keep going. It can't reset. That's what the problem is. It can't reset. Also, right, I'm just going to go off of row zero, row one, row two, row three. So it has to be sent through the process order MB. Is that the way he does it? 
Um, Yep, so the process order MB also takes the order count. It also takes the order count. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Order count ID order. Oh, wait, bye bye. Alrighty. Just B zero. So <sighs> So in the Free version, you have this uh, order pro or process order MB. So you send the order ID from the state. Then you get new this equals state dot OIDX. Then you do new OIDX plus equals one. Then you send back this. So shit. Is that the way I'm doing it? New order count. New order count. I, okay. For the account. Okay. So then when you come back. Oh, so how the hell in the new version or in the old version did you run it multiple times? If you if you're pro what she does all the time, how do you process How do you process a second one? How do you process a new? I mean, if I were to do this, then it would be account state dot.
yet. Um, we have a major problem here because this order only increases if the order was actually filled. Here, I have no idea if the order was actually filled. And then there is no way to say account state dot order count ID here because that's always going to reset it to zero. I would have to do something like if order result status zero, then order count order plus. One. And then once we... And then... Here out... So here, if the order is not filled, that's gonna that is going to do the log records. So log ID right. Oh, no matter what, and then here. This is gonna be the same thing. And then up here, you'd have to do this. This is the only way for right now. Hmm? Order result. Oh. So if we were going to go through this, then if it's filled, do this. If it's not, then do this. Then here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, then let's see. Order D, and this would be log D. This this IDX. Oh, so the IDX is the bar. And the ID is 
9,859. Column is 55. What is column? Column is indicator setting. How many indicator settings do we have? Total indicator settings. Oh, I know, I know. It's going to say 55 no matter what. So we have 55 indicator settings and we also have total so we have 56 indicators, one total order setting. What? Oh, let's go to this. God damn. I wonder if that's because of this. I oh, know wait. Holy Jesus. I'm not multi processing. Oh my God. All right, we need to stop. Uh, let's reset this. See if we can turn on the number because holy shit. There we go. Five hundred and seventy seven thousand orders. That makes more sense. So now I could say all, all, I can say zero or oh, wait, all, give me, wait, what? Give me all the rows. Wait, what? Give me all the rows for call. What? I want all the rows where call equals. Give me all the rows. All the rows. If I did zero through five, it's just gonna give me those five. But then I want all. Oh. I don't want that. I want it where call equals zero. How do I do that? Give me all the rows where call equals zero. All. 
equal to zero. How do I do that? Oh, I think I have to do something like a Oh, well, I can do order records where order records all equal equal zero. How did I do that? How did I Okay. Ah. And so now I can understand why you have to have a two dimensional array. Because now this is. And we have 32. And we get down to 6,000. And then we're going to have another 32. And so you need to have a two dimensional array in order to see exactly. Uh, okay, so we are going to have to change order records to a two-dimensional array, and then we're also going to have to change it to a two-dimensional array as well. Because I don't know how in the world he does it in the old version, where you have multiple, 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 multiple... I think I could just add another add another Well, I think I would actually have to make the order records 3 dimensional because I have a dimension of order IDs, then I have a dimension of of columns which would be the uh in this case would be the indicator settings. Which one am I using? I'm using the indicator settings zero, one, two, three, whatever. Then I have order settings. So it would have to be three dimensions because I would I could say give me all of the rows for order setting zero. And then that means I could have this and then indicator settings one to, one through 55 or i could say give me order settings one with indicator settings six 
give me all those rows. Right? So I need it, I would need it to be three dimensional. Because these are the rows. These are the indicator settings, and these so it has it's gonna have to be three dimensions. Oh boy. Well then I have no idea how I'm gonna change the plotting around that. But I feel like the plotting I, I need the I'm gonna need the plotting to be something like uh I'm gonna need the plotting to be something like um uh octobot anyways and so i'm thinking maybe what i could do is create my own three-dimensional array and then from there uh take these order records and throw them into a polar a polar's database and then from there you could do the thing like how you have uh the entries here where we'd be able to see, you know, and then you'd be able to see like 16, 10, man, I'm gonna have to throw this into a table. There's no way around it. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to throw it into a table somehow. Well, not even somehow, because I could just get the RSI below six. I from so from the entries, I could get this sixteen and ten would be the RSI below, then the RSI. Uh, window would be 10 then i could have it set with all of those things exactly like a uh, uh octobot i just don't know how to construct that table i have no idea how they construct the table i have no idea how I guess up here. Developing software. Hi guys, and welcome back. Presenting the footage the interview. And that's going to do is it's going to go for my parameters. With two R template row that would be in the shape of the top target. The hit class of the class of table header. Score cell. Page red is equal to. Oh, so that's this. Slash styles. No CSS. And then we close down here table rows and the contents of each row is each cell inside of that row of data. Now I'm going to restart my application because it creates a variable headings inside of the default for my pool of data with only one header, the name and model source, and then data element. Perhaps no data and elements, but we change the name. I pair the two cup to data into our so I'm gonna pair a term for the for this point, we have to pass the template our data so that it can then be used in particular for our cell ratio keeper, iterate the first row will be this couple, the second row will be this couple, and so on. The first row will be this couple. Shit! So, then what we do is...
df columns. Well, looks like I'm going to have to take this I'm going to have to take this and this and match it up with Match this and this up with the tuple fields. I'm going to have to do the tuple fields. I'm going to put all of those. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to have to just do RSI below, RSI window. Uh... Well, apparently you can do a filter. What the hell does this mean? Filter data to do. What? Numeric filter? Dash? What the fuck is dash? Oh no. Oh. Filter data table based on the spot. You have to pay for dash. So this is greater than. Let's see, less than. So less than 2000. Can I use dash? Plot lead. What's the difference between Dash and Plotly? With Dash, you don't make visualizations. You build an interface to deploy Plotly's visualization. It uses Flask under the hood. Anyways, gotta go.